Hello everyone, this is James and welcome to Lectures. This is part 3 of the diabetic drug series and today I'll be discussing about SGL2 inhibitors, alpha-glucosidase inhibitors, PZA and insulin. Let's talk first about the sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors. So GLT2, they are found in the proximal tubules of the kidneys and their function is to reabsorb filtered glucose back into the circulation. So when we say inhibitors, so the GLT2 inhibitors will inhibit the reabsorption of filtered glucose back into the circulation, but instead it promotes excretion of blood glucose in the urine. Okay? And these are the glyphosin, not frozen because frozen is let it go, let it go. Well, it's sort of let it go because you're letting go of the blood glucose into the urine. And these are your kana glyphosin, your dapa glyphosin, your um, impa glyphosin, and your R2 glyphosin. And these medications are indicated for type 2 diabetes. And now these medications are prescribed for patients with heart failure because of the natriuresis and the smoothing diuresis. This medication improves left ventricular functions. So, what are the contraindications? Prior DKA, also if you are type 2 and your GFR is low, less than 45 for R2, and then less than 30 for the rest of the medications in this class. Because if you have low glomerular filtration rate, so it will not really you know, function well to, to um, decrease blood, uh, to excrete blood glucose from, from the circulation. And what are the side effects of this medication? Um, candidiasis or urosepsis or UTI because there's a lot of sugar now in the urina urinary tract, glycosuria, and this environment is a good environment for the pathogens to thrive. Hypotension because, the, as I said, this medication promotes osmotic diuresis, especially if this medication is combined with your diuretics, your ECIs, and ARBs. It can also cause um, skeletal fragility because it disrupts the phosphate and calcium homeostasis. When in fact, uh, canagiflosin was reported to cause um, osteoporosis um, at the hips and then at the lower spine. And another side effect of this medication is diabetic ketoacidosis but it's a euglycemic so the blood sugar is not above 250 milligrams per, per dl dka happens not because of so many glucose in the blood but because there is less glucose in the blood so the body will source out fats other sources such as fats to burn transport into fuel and the product the byproduct of fat burning are ketones so you have ketones, but your blood sugar is not really high. Okay. This medication also uh, increased a uh, risk for amputation, especially if you have PVD or neuropathy, because you are because of the diuretic, diuretic, the osmotic diuretic effect of this medication. It can cause hypoperfusion to the lower limbs, and because this medication doesn't affect. Uh, insulin secretion or stimulation so it has low risk of hypoglycemia not unless you combine this with your sulfonyl or insulin so now let's proceed with alpha glucosidase inhibitors so alpha glucosidase they are found in the brushes of the small intestines we know that most of the nutrients are, are absorbed in the small intestines so what does alpha glucosidase do is to break down complex carbs, carbohydrates into simple carbohydrates such as your glucose. So by the word inhibitors, these medications will inhibit, will inhibit the breakdown of your complex carbs into simple carbs. These are your carbos and miglipols. So what are the contraindications? You know, those undigested carbs will stay in your in your intestines. So contraindication includes it you have inflammatory bowel diseases, you have Crohn's, you have ulcerative colitis, or if you have um, bowel obstruction. 
Adverse effects are more on gastrointestinal symptoms, flatulence, bloating, diarrhea, because those undigestive carbs will stay in your intestines and then they will be rotten and they will be fermented that produces gas. There's also a mild uh, self-limiting liver injury. The cause is unknown, but it's thought to be because of the bacteria produced by the uh, undigested carbohydrates. And because this medication does not involve uh, uh, insulin stimulation, so there is low risk for hypoglycemia. Now let's talk about thiazolidinidions. This is a hard to pronounce medication. In other words, Celine Dion, no offense, man. So this medication binds with peroxisome peripheral activated uh, receptor, gamma, or the PPAR. What it does is it increases the body's sens sensitivity to insulin, reduces hepatic glucose production, and enhances glucose uptake. So these are your glitazones, your pioglitazone and your rosiglitazone. What are the side effects? Weight gain because this medication will upregulate, you know, the, 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 the feeding center, which in turn can increase food intake. And also this medication can cause fat maturation. So fat, more fats, maturation equals more fat storage. And the other side effect, side effect is uh, fluid retention or edema because this medication will reabsorb fluid in the distal nephron and also promote sodium reabsorption. And then fractures because of decreased osteoblast and increased bone marrow adiposity. So there's more adipose tissues that can alter lowers the bone mineral density. There is a class in this medication called troglitazone. This medication was pulled out because it was hepatotoxic. And then about PO, pioglitazone, it was initi initially associated with bladder cancer but still remains controversial because the subsequent study shows no link to bladder CA. But anyway, the contraindications for this medication based on the side effects are heart failure because it can uh, retain fluid. And it is also contraindicated for patients with active liver disease and patients who have active or history of bladder cancer. And because this medication doesn't stimulate the release of insulin, so there is no risk, low risk of hypoglycemia unless you combine this medication with insulin or sulfonylureas or miglutinides. So now we have come to the last medication in this series, insulin. I so what is the mechanism of action of insulin? Lipoprotein that causes translocation of glucose transporter from the cell cell to pass from the cytoplasm to the cell surface allowing influx of glucose. In other words, insulin will tell the cells to open up so glucose can come in inside the cells and can be utilized for energy. Okay. So over here, I have four types of insulin. There are some modifications. There's a ultra long acting which can last up to 36 hours. This is your uh, glargin, the JO, and Dogletic. And there are also some inhaled inhaled rapid acting insulin but these are the four major types that we usually see when we work at bedside um, so I, you can pause the video and then you can look at the the time frame of the onset of action the peak and the duration what are the side effects of insulin i've been discussing this over and over again um, hypoglycemia and weight gain why weight gain because insulin is anabolic it build up, build up storage of your fats and it prevents the breakdown of your triglycerides. More insulin, more weight. And then also, uh, rarely insulin can cause hypokalemia. Remember when a patient comes in with a potassium with six something, you give a cocktail and that includes your insulin, albuterol, nebulization, um, uh, D50, and your calcium gluconate. Your insulin and your uh, albuterol 
will lower down your potassium level because this medication will take your potassium into back from the bloodstream back into the cells. Your calcium gluconate doesn't affect your potassium potassium level, but it will help stabilize your heart. And your difficulty, of course, is to counter the hypoglycemic effect of insulin. And that is all, and I hope you enjoy this series.